You can try fighting the law all you want, but the law is always going to win. From politicians and celebrities to sports figures and business leaders, they're fighting the law. Now, here to sort out the nation's top legal news stories is America's favorite legal analyst, Royal Oaks. This is the Royal Oaks Show. Thank you, Mike Warren, and welcome to the Royal Oak Show, and welcome to our co-host, Ken Jeffries. Ken, how you doing today? Hi there, hi there, hi there. It was an interesting, interesting week in the news, oh and we'll get to it. Oh, yes. A lot so of funerals and uh, yeah. things like that. Wow, a long funeral. Aretha Franklin's was it's, hours. Aretha's is still going, I think. Oh, my and, uh, goodness. Well, it was, it was, yeah. And welcome to our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you, as always, for Your having me. back was bothering you. Feeling better? Yeah, I'm bouncing back. I'm young and spry. I'm a millennial. Okay. I can't have back That's problems. True. Millennials don't have ailments. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Well. You had a back problem? I did. Young people have back problems, um, I too. I foolishly attempted to wakeboard. Uh, I am a little bit too old a millennial for that. <laughs> yeah, it went badly. Oh, my God. Well, if you think uh, things went badly for you, uh, there are some very famous people uh, yeah, this week that we said goodbye to. We're going to get to that. Uh, our Hot Tub Time Machine feature later in the uh, show, one of the biggest stars in American political history. We're going to hear from this person and see if you guys can guess All who right. it might be. We, uh, of course, have our feature Moron of the Week. We're going to have a candidate in a minute and then another one a little later in the show. And uh, our Guess the Verdict feature, we're going to get you you guys to okay. see if you can guess the outcome Ooh. of some rather unusual lawsuits. And of course the top story is John McCain, death of a maverick. The Kavanaugh hearings begin on uh, Tuesday uh, and uh, lots of other stuff uh, in the news. So let's kick it off with uh, Moron of the Week. Um, and uh, this guy, he's a pretty solid candidate. Um, he faked a heart attack in order to get an ambulance ride to the hospital cafeteria. Mm. Don't you think that puts him in the running for Moron of the Week? No, but it sounds like a good idea. To actually. the cafeteria? <laughs> hey, save the Uber charge, right? That's right. Kenneth Ray Couch is his name. Well, that's a good name for a guy who would do this. Kenneth Ray Couch, age mm -hmm. 35. I don't like his first name, though. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> right. And that's plus, you got the three names, Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah. We don't all want the innocent Kenneth Couches to be tarred with the same brush. Yeah. So apparently he fakes a heart attack in Knox County, Kentucky, in order to get an ambulance ride to the hospital cafeteria. Apparently loves the, the wraps there, the burritos or Dear something. Dear God. Yeah. So um, the cops actually were after him. They had responded to a report of a stolen gun at, uh, at a home, and he was the suspect. So the cops learned that he had been picked up at a, at a supermarket after he said, oh, I'm having a heart attack here at uh, Trader Joe's. You know, he got the free coffee, he got the sample, and mm -hmm, then, mm -hmm. he, then he wanted to have a little Get more. Get a free food. ride. Yeah. So I think this guy uh, qualifies as a, a solid candidate for, uh, for more right. of the week. And cheapskate of the week, too, I think. Yeah. yeah. Hey, before we get to uh, our feature of Guess the Verdict, guys, some breaking news. I don't know if you, you know, for years they've been complaining about the Washington Redskins name. And yes. this uh, owner, Dan Snyder, has absolutely resisted. He's sticking with the name. I don't know if you heard that. Today he has agreed. He's changing. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding. He's changing the name. It's no longer going to be Washington Redskins. What's uh, it going to be? It, just the Redskins. He's dropping Washington because it imparts a negative image of poor, <laughs> poor leadership, mismanagement, corruption, cheating, lying, and graft. Yeah. Very so, good. Very yeah, good. Yeah, no, no Connor, I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't a, kidding at all. You weren't kidding at all. Kidding yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, you know, that, that debate rages it's on. Very funny. But okay, guys, so uh, he, he put your, put your uh, guess caps on. You're going to guess <clears> the verdict <throat> here. We've got three fascinating suits from around the country. Yeah. Uh, here, first, let's go to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, shall we? Former nun Kathleen Zanio is not happy. She stumbled across a winter, winter carnival in Milwaukee, and a group of students had created a snow sculpture that looked just like an amply endowed female in a bikini. Sister Zanio found a hatchet and hacked away at the sculpture until it was crushed ice. At her disorderly conduct trial, her lawyer argued that what she did was very similar to kicking a snowman in the butt. So, uh, disorderly conduct, mm -hmm. she's standing in front of the judge, Sister Zanio is facing justice. Who wins I'm this hung provocative up. legal dispute? I'm hung up on the very first line of the entire story, mm -hmm. former nun. 
Did hey, she get kicked hey, out of the hey, nunnery? Don't hey. For I don't getting, think you should for, judge. Did she axe somebody at the nunnery? Is that know. what happened? Yeah, well, she used an axe. I mean, yeah. that's kind of weird, too. Yeah. It's like Very an ice strange. pick, maybe. No more I, snow bikini. By the way, I went to uh, Weird Al Yankovic's uh, the star unveiling on the walk you, of fame. You had your yeah. picture taken. Yeah. It, it was funny. I took a picture with that. Yeah, because it's... We have it's a long story, yeah. but we have we we do have we once worked at the same radio station. Yeah. He replaced me years ago. Yeah, he said that. But he oh, told the, the crowd. He said he told the crowd, "Don't use a pickaxe <laughs> on my star. <laughs> on my star. My star. I love Just it. Like yeah. Okay, I think this lady's We're, going down. Okay, what about you, Ken? What's your guess? Well, I don't know I mean, because she used a pickaxe on an ice sculpture. Yeah, I mean, way out of line. Well. The, the, what, 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 what did they arrest her for? Disorderly, disorderly conduct? The conduct. Yeah, very disorderly. Strange. No, I think her chances of winning, I was going to say slim and none, but no. I, no, I wouldn't do that. That would be very fun. No, I, th I, think, she, I think she wins. Uh, yeah. She was convicted, the $1,000 fine. Oh, well. So Connor got oh, lucky what? on that one. Case of disorderly conduct. Destroying what are you going to do? Can art. I like nuns. Case number two. <laughs> Judge uh, Charles uh, Helene uh, in Texas has a habit. Whenever mm -hmm. he signs his name, Speaking he follows nuns. it with a happy face. Oh. A lot of people do that. It's his way of telling everybody he deals with, have a nice day. Sounds okay. innocent. That's good. Well, in his courtroom one day, uh, a guy named Charles Nelson Drew, you, you know, it's it's bad when they give all three, three names. names. Yeah, yeah there Nelson it is. Nelson Riley would be. De yeah. <laughs> death sentence. Mm. Sentence to death. And oh, what no. happens next is, sure enough, the judge, probably by by force of habit, follows his signature on the death warrant with a happy face. Oh, that's that's a bad So, one. Mr. Drew's lawyer appeals with the argument that this symbol showed a bias against him and amounted to cruel and unusual punishment. So, the Court of Appeal is going to decide. Uh, what, what do you think, uh, Ken, what do you think the Court of Appeal determined in terms of whether that death sentence should stand with the happy face attached? Yes, I do. You think it is? Uh, yes. Okay, what about yeah, you, Ken? Yeah, I think it stands. I think this is, uh, it's a bad look. As they say, <laughs> uh, it's a real bad look. Uh, but yeah, happy death. But uh, I don't think that's enough well, to you guys show are, cruel and unusual. You guys are right. The appellate court said, nice try, yes. nice try, but right. off you go. All right, third and final case, guys. Uh, St. Louis Art Museum arranges to ship a painting. Maybe you know it. I knew you were an art lover, Ken. It's called Curtains by the famed Roy Lichtenstein oh. to the Whitney Museum in New York, okay? Unfortunately, someplace between St. Louis and New York, a security guard who was assigned to guard the painting takes a felt-tip pen and writes on the canvas. He draws a heart and inscribes. Reggie loves crystal. Then, as a kind of a postscript, I love you, Tushy. Love buns. So this is all over uh, the painting. He was to guard. So it was curtains for this painting. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Curtains so for the St. Louis Museums filed what? a lawsuit against the security company that employed the romantic guard. Who do you think might have won this lawsuit? It's like. It's a romantic gesture, like you mm -hmm. carve your sweetheart's yeah. name into a tree to be there for all posterity. But trees die. This work of art will persist forever in a museum. It's beautiful, really. Or a picture of it, yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? Uh, <laughs> does the museum win against the security guard company or, or not? You know, I, I think they, they have a good case on yeah. that one. That seems like a slam yeah, dunk. I seems like it. I think so, too. You guys are right. $50,000. Oh! Oh! Absolutely. So, um, were you able to restore it, or you don't? You I don't mean, know. you have to for only fifty thousand. I think that's got to be a restoration. I hope they do better than that. Did you see that Mr. Bean movie where he uh, Whistler's yeah. mother? Yeah, and um, yeah, that did a, not go well. It's a classic. It's a classic. Um, I hate Mr. Classic Bean. Film. That's another. Whoa! Because it's no, you don't want to. That's a whole other show. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it a long like story? Why you hate? It's a very <laughs> long story. Yeah. I can't wait, wait to hear a minute, Ken. How in the world could you hate Mr. Bean? He's an in, he's like Pee Wee Herman Next for week, adults. You know, the entire episode Pee -wee is why is Ken adult. hates Mr. Bean. All right, I'll tell you why. And yeah, it's a long story. God. I'll make it short. We were supposed to get off a ship. We just finished a cruise. We're in yeah. San Diego. You Pedro. and Mr. Bean? No, and they, it, it took us a long time to get off the ship. Sure, a right. very long time. Can't say it took us. And the all they showed us was Mr. Bean movies, and the and it was so. And I hate. I, I, I'm not a fan <laughs> of British humor. Anyway, and was like, I will say you know the guy's going to get mature trouble. of you, Ken. I'm going to give you that. What? This is very mature of you. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just poor I, Mr. Bean. I, I don't. It's nothing against the actor. So it's a negative Rowan, affiliation. But I, but I, Rowan Atkinson. I, I don't know why I know his poor, name. But I, I just, Rowan. I just, I just don't. Uh, you know. Not your cup of tea. It's not your fault. You were or trapped. British English you were tortured. Tea, right? It's yeah. just like people who are enhanced, interrogated with loud rap music. They're going to hate that song. It's, it's not your fault. It's not Rowan's fault. This is why they try to blast Barry Manilow music to get Noriega out in 19. Panama. Yeah, uh, hates Barry I now. Remember that. Pretty good strategy. Uh, so, top story tonight, of course, uh, John McCain's death. Yes. Um, I guess my attitude is it's like an end of an era. Um, he was a maverick. He would go left. He would go right. Um, today, it seems like we don't have any mavericks anymore. 
uh, the Tea Party, the religious right, they're not going to put up with any moderation. Right. Any Republicans, there, there are not dependable votes on the litmus test, like immigration or abortion or gun rights. Absolutely not. Similarly, on the left, I don't think there's a lot of flexibility among progressives, especially now with folks who are saying any dissent from the march towards socialism. Uh, so I, I see this polarization, and so I think it's a shame that we have lost this era of the maverick where somebody like John McCain could get near, near Nearly to the pinnacle. I mean, he was a very prominent Republican. He almost beat George W. Bush for the primary for the presidential nomination in 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, then, in uh, you know, he lost to Barack Obama, but that was that was kind of a juggernaut. Anybody Obama, was losing to Barack. Yeah, Obama. Exactly. I got to say, it, it says a lot about John McCain too, and that he invited George W. Bush to the funeral, because in 2000 in South Carolina, if I remember right, George W. Bush unleashed a, a, an awful campaign against mm -hmm. McCain, uh, full of all kinds of innuendo. And Mm -hmm. robocalls and things like that. Yeah. And for McCain to turn the other cheek on that yeah. and uh, t to me speaks... And then he of, asked Barack McCain's Obama parents. to speak. And, and Obama, too, funeral. of course. Who yeah, absolutely. Him, sure. Somehow he didn't ask Trump to join his... Fact, I think Trump was specifically disinvited. Disinvited to the funeral. Well, yeah. no, they, I think the McCain family said we didn't disinvite... Uh, I'm not sure. Or maybe we just didn't invite him. Yeah. Like that. When you're not getting invited to funerals, you know you're screwing up. I think they actually made it real clear they didn't want him there. Yeah. I think Barbara Bush, her funeral, they made it real clear we don't want Trump there. I believe uh, when Prince, whatever his name is, Harry or William, the one that got married recently, uh, mm -hmm. that was Harry, I guess. Yeah. Uh, Mike <laughs> Gary knows all this stuff. Um, I think they made it clear they didn't want the president. Yeah, probably. Okay, so probably. we've got this era of polarization. If oh. we have a consensus, a rare consensus on our panel, that maybe uh, being a maverick is a kind of a neat thing, how do we get it back? I you mean, know, did he uh, invite Palin to the funeral? I, you know, I, no, I think, I I think she was excluded, too. Not I think invited. there was bad blood between them. There I don't, I don't been, know yeah, why. Yeah, I don't, maybe there was some criticism of one. Well, or the toward other the end of the campaign, too, yeah. I think she wanted. But probably yeah. saw her as the reason he lost. He yeah. was going to lose anyway, but it didn't help. So how do we get back this sense of, of collegiality, of, mm -hmm. of hands across the aisle, I gotta say, and I know I'm biased because I'm right of center, but living in California, I feel like this is an incubator for an experiment in extremism. Mm. We have a one-party system where the governor and all of the other constitutional officers, from lieutenant governor to superintendent of public instruction, they're all Democrats. We have a virtual supermajority in both the Assembly and the Senate. Uh, we have a huge uh, uh, voter advantage for the Democrats. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can be on the left side and say, well, I'm happy because I like left policies instead of right. But I think there's something to be said for compromise. We do have the highest poverty rate in the nation. We do have political co correctness run amok here. We have no sense of compromise. If there weren't some sort of moderate Democrats from the Central Valley near Fresno that occasionally voted with the Republicans, then everything would have got Prop 13 would be gone. Every remnant of Republicanism and compromise would be gone. So it seems like this is not exactly the example for the nation. What's the formula? How do we get back to an era when people would actually work with each other? I mean, I guess an easy answer is get rid of Trump, and then that's then the hatred level goes down, and the polarization level goes down. But is it that yeah. easy? I think it's not. Not that easy because I think that the American political system, the, the party system, has really tapped into at the moment that they that people don't want us to go back to the era of compromise. They want more stridency. They want more aggression. They want more extreme, you know, pendulum swinging back and forth. Well, it because it's this sort of, I, you know, you get slapped in the face, you want to get back in their face and do the same thing to them. So that's the problem is the, the politicians are reacting to the public and the public wants their their candidates to be even more extreme and in that's in that scenario it's not like you can calm down politics because it's not politics fault it's our fault and uh, trump really is the poster child for you know pugnacious you know you hit me i hit you back twice yeah. as hard uh, he and his defenders would say you know this is the way to accomplish things when we come back we're going to talk about the kavanaugh hearings for the supreme court coming up on tuesday here on the royal oak show stay with us We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. Hi, everyone. This is Fred Dreyer. You listen to me every week on the Sports Lounge. Well, I'm here to tell you my good friend and co-host, Michael Horn, is making his wine knowledge and his incredible industry contacts available to you. Mike will educate you in the world of wines. He will stock your wine cellar, wine refrigerator, or wine rack 
with one-of-a-kind wines. Also, as a lover of a great glass of port, I will share with you my experiences in finding the cigars that fit your palate. I will help you stock your humidor with great cigars that reflect your growing taste and the very best smokes for your budget. Mike and I can set up a once-in-a-lifetime wine dinner, and I can host a sports cigar party. Call us today at 818-818-6400. That's 818-818-6400. Let us find the dream wines and cigars of your lifetime. The following ad contains shocking material. Listener discretion is advised. Is someone in your family playing a dangerous game of Russian roulette? Over 43,000 people die a year from drug overdose. 120 people a day. Five people every hour. One person every 12 minutes. 88,000 people die every year from alcohol abuse. Over 240 people a day. 10 an hour. One person every six minutes. Somebody you know may be next. Learn how to help someone you love get away from the drug alcohol and bad influences with the FMLA people can take a leave of absence from their job and still keep it call quit drugs 321 now at 800-378-3315 800-378-3315 800-378-3315 that's 800-378-3315 the smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12-hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares, plus save up to 75% in your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host, Ken Jeffries, and our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks. So, guys, uh, big surprise here. I, I'm gonna, uh, we're going to give a, away a huge prize. Ooh. Can, can I say one thing we have? Yeah, we actually have someone uh-huh. viewing this right now. Can oh. I say hi to Marion? Absolutely. Hi, Marion. So How are you? Is it her okay. birthday? Happy I, birthday, I don't, we, we can sing to her if it is her birthday, but <laughs> I don't know. Let's not. I, I, I'm, I'm not a good singer. In other words, if you're watching us now on Facebook, you know, type in something so we know you're here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here's the prize, guys. Uh, we are going to send a million winner dollars of our contest. A oh, million dollars. That's not uh, it. An autographed no. picture of the panel. Even there. better. I think we may even let Mike Gary in on the picture. Heck too, so yes. Be all four of us. We'll autograph it. And we're going to send it to whoever emails in an answer oh. to our... Daryl Satsman is one. Daryl. Daryl, excellent. I know Daryl from KF to my I old KF. To we have Darryl. two people it's watching. Two, two. Come right, on, keep it up. Let's get it up. Here's the political trivia question. Here's the political trivia question. The first one of you folks to email us with the answer at info at crntalk.com. That's info, I-N-F-O, at crntalk.com. You will win the autograph picture. So here's the political uh, trivia question. So I shouldn't shout the answer? No. It, okay. it's, it's a tie-in to John McCain, and this is a hint. John McCain is part of the answer. I want you to tell me the last ten people who lost for the presidency, the, the Democrat or Republican who lost. The people. last ten losers of the presidency. The hint is John McCain is one of them. The first one to send that email into info at CRN. Uh, it's ten different, at, ten it's different ten people, different obviously. People. Ten. You can't write Harold Stassen. <laughs> <down 400> <laughs> Poor Harold, that's right. Poor Harold. So info at crntalk.com. Okay. Hey, before we get to uh, the uh, Justice Kavanaugh, uh, he's judge now, he wants to be Justice Kavanaugh. It's funny, the, the Court of Appeals at the federal level, they call those bench officers judges, not mm-hmm. justices, yeah. even though they are appellate 
And yeah. in the California system and most other appellate. state court systems, if you're an appellate uh, bench officer, you yeah. are a justice, yeah. not a judge. Anyway, he wants to go from judge to justice. We're going to get to that in a minute. But before we do, uh, we were talking off the air, Connor, about an interesting story this last these last few days where Donald Trump is really angry because he was supposedly off the record with Bloomberg talking about Canada. And from what he said, it sounds like, to me, maybe he had a, a legitimate beef. If they really said to him, you were off the record, Mr. President, and then they broke their word, I mean, doesn't he have a right to complain? No, oh, yeah. I think, I, can I just say something? Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I think Trump, uh, 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 and I thought Trump said to them, I'm going to tell you this, and it's off the record. Correct, yeah. Is that what he did? That's what he claims to have done. Well, that's uh, Do they admit thing? that he said it's off the record? No, okay. they don't. They say that everything that they printed was on the record, that okay. he did not preface it with this is off the record, and they say we would never print it off the record. That is a, an important thing, and a lot of other people have said, say, yeah, there's no reason that Blue, Bloomberg uh, News, business news people, would have broken an off the record agreement, especially for this comment. It's not like this was a earth an earth-shattering bombshell that would change everything. This is Trump saying, off the record, I'm not going to give Canada an inch. They get nothing in this. Right. Any agreement that Canada wants to come to the table with and that we could possibly ever sign on to, as to trade, is going to be on our terms completely. Right. And then Trump says that, ostensibly it's off the record, goes on Twitter, blasts off and says, I can't believe the enemy of the people, the press is struck right. again, you know, they're so evil. Much. And then he sort of signs off with, well, at least Canada knows where we stand now. Come on, Trump, it, it sounds, obviously. It sound, quite so, frankly, it sounds orchestrated. Yeah, yeah it yeah, sounds it's, like it's, he it's, wants an excuse know. to vilify the press, as usual, and he wants an excuse to pretend Get his to message say something. across to Canada that he truly is Sincerely, a tough guy. Sincerely, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. want you to hear that. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, I have a, a, I have a weird theory about You know, t Trump, I, I always thought went, Look, right here I go again with my mouth. He, that, he went doctor shopping during Vietnam, and then he because he yeah. got out of his bo right. bone spurs and stuff. Right, right. Mm -hmm. but maybe he tried to go to Canada, be, and they wouldn't let him in. <laughs> That's during possible. During Vietnam, you know? they, uh, okay. <laughs> they were prescient. Yes. All right, so let's talk about uh, Kavanaugh. Judge Kavanaugh. Uh, he wants to be on the Supreme Court. Uh, what do you guys think the Democrats will have up their sleeve? Because it's always a game. Uh, the nominees want to say little, if anything, that could be construed as uh, a basis to vote against them. Uh, if, if they say anything about abortion that suggests they might be hostile to Roe versus Wade, that's going to be red meat for the Democrats. Yep. It's going to energize the Democrat base. It, mm -hmm. it would provide a basis maybe for the Democrats to defeat him. Uh, what do you think the Democrats will be able to do, the members of the Senate Judiciary Committee, to try to draw Draw Judge Kavanaugh out. I mean, the the political mechanism is is difficult. The the getting the American people on their side seems to have failed. Right. The the attempt immediately was to say Merrick Garland wa had a seat stolen from out out from underneath him. There was a, a it was a bald attempt at, at a successful attempt at orchestrating uh, a, 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 an unlikely outcome that Trump would win and then appoint a, a Republican uh, appointee. But it worked. It's only fair that we get that seat back. Then step two, it's unfair and wrong for this, pol this politician, Trump, who's under investigation to put somebody on his own jury, basically, mm -hmm. because this person might d be deciding Supreme Court. That's not working. What's left? Maybe the Democrats can deny a quorum. If they show up with zero Democrats, oh, not a right. single right. Democrat in the room. And you know the answer to that. The, re the Republicans would send sheriffs out to arrest Drag the Democrats. Drag them in. When we come back, should Kavanaugh recuse himself? We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. You're experiencing pain, back pain, shoulder, elbow, or hand pain, pain from a sports injury. If so, schedule a visit with Dr. Michael Sheps, the leading expert in laser therapy for pain management. Call 310-873-4422 or go to drsheps.com. Experience Epic T, the breakthrough laser therapy system that Dr. Sheps developed to make you pain-free in less time. Laser therapy is a non-invasive, safe, and effective in-office procedure that penetrates deep into your skin without damaging the tissue. It perfectly targets areas of pain to promote fast, natural healing. Relax your muscles ease muscle spasms, joint stiffness, and arthritis pain while increasing blood circulation. For over 25 years, Dr. Sheps has helped Olympic athletes and sports enthusiasts alike get back in the game. Schedule your visit with Dr. Sheps at his Brentwood office in California. Call 310-873-4422 or visit drsheps.com. That's D-R-S-H-E-P-S.com, 310-873-4422. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? 
smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Have you purchased a wine refrigerator or put a wine cellar in your home? Maybe you have a new wine rack. Great news, but what wines will you buy to stock your wine rack? Let me, Michael Horn, help. I'll find the wines for your wine cellar with your taste in mind. We'll determine what varietals, Cabernet, Pinot, Chardonnay, what types of wine, California, French, Italian, you like. We'll find you one-of-a-kind wines from all of our friends we interview daily on the What's Cooking Show and the What's Cooking on Wine Show. On a budget, we'll find you the best affordable wines. Want hard-to-get library wines? We can source those for you, too. And if you need cigars, let L.A. Ram sports legend and iconic actor Fred Dreyer make your selections. Hey, we could even host a wine dinner for you or set up a sports cigar party with Fred. Call me, Michael Horn, at the What's Cooking Today show. Call 818-818-6400. That's 818-818-6400. Let us find the dream wines of your lifetime. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS? News flash: the president has changed the tax laws, and now you may be able to pay the IRS less. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, the tax doctor can help you pay the IRS as little as possible allowed by law. There are new tax laws for business owners, the self-employed, even W-2 workers. If you have a back tax problem or a few years of unfilled returns, new help to save you money is now here. Call right now to see how the new tax tax laws can help you. Plus, right now, we'll waive the consultation fee and give you a free tax savings report. Attention business owners, the self-employed, and W-2 workers. Make this free call to the tax doctor now and learn how to take advantage of the new tax laws that may help you pay the IRS less. 800-985-1610. 800-985-1610. 800 800-985-1610. That's 800-985-1610. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host Ken Jeffries and our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks. So the Kavanaugh hearings kick off uh, Tuesday. Democrats wanted to push it off uh, after the midterm elections because at that point the Democrats running for re-election in the red states wouldn't have to worry about uh, the backlash if they yep. voted for Kavanaugh and then the uh, Democrats uh, against him, that is, and the, Dem- and the Republicans would punish uh, them. So, um, I mentioned recusal. Um, it's interesting. Some people say the reason Donald Trump picked Kavanaugh is because Kavanaugh really alone among the main candidates for the job had come out and said, don't bother the president with yeah. lawsuits and, and criminal indictments and so on. He's Teflon just Don too busy. Be and, and it's interesting because Kavanaugh actually worked for Ken Starr yeah. when Starr right. was investigating Clinton and he was pushing hard. Let's get Clinton. Let's, let's uh, impeach him. So Since weird. then, and pushing. long before Trump came along, uh, Kavanaugh had a change of heart, and, yeah. he, and he wrote articles about how the president really is a busy guy. You know, you can you can put it off until after he gets out. Right. And so the Democrats are, are actually going to be pushing to get him to agree to recuse himself from disputes that directly would involve the legal interests of Donald Trump, the guy putting him in there. Like, mm-hmm. may a president pardon himself? Like, should a president be subject to indictment while in office? What about the Mueller investigation? What happens if, if Trump tries to fire Mueller and so on, the obstruction mm-hmm. of justice. You think there's any hope for the Democrats to, to work something out where this guy would say, you know, I'll, I'll step uh, uh, down. Now, there is a sort of a precedent. William Rehnquist, before he was chief, when he was mm-hmm. on the U.S. Supreme Court, he recused himself from U.S. versus Nixon in 1974, the unanimous 8-0 decision where the Supreme Court said to Nixon, hand over the tapes to the investigators. And he did it because he had worked with 
the Attorney General John Mitchell. He had too close a connection. Do you think there's a connection between Kavanaugh and Trump in the sense that he's got this paper trail of saying, leave the president alone? Or would he just say, oh, that's generic stuff? That's the problem. I think it's a little bit generic. It, it, there's no connection to an individual in the you know, White House or the administration. And the idea that you would have to recuse yourself from any case involving the guy that picked you for the job, generally, that's right. just a problem. I think that, you know, it, it, having picked him from the job doesn't disqualify him from being the jury for that branch. We have inherently a checks and balance situation wherein the Supreme Court acts like the jury over the executive branch in that sense. But it, you know, it, that takes into account the fact that the executive appoints the people on that. It doesn't appoint the people in the Senate and the House, so they're supposed to be the, the check on the president in that way. Not that they <laughs> have been or will be, um, given the current political situation. But it, it really does seem to be to be too generic, even though it's a closer connection in right. reality than this guy, uh, than Rehnquist's connection to Mitchell, just because Mitchell hap to, happened to be in the Nixon administration, basically. It had nothing to do with Nixon and the administration's, you know, being investigated and Watergate and all that. It's still a, a personal individual connection, as opposed to just his academic writing. So no speed bumps on the Kavanaugh turnpike no. on the way to getting the job. Unless they start dragging well, Democrats in. That would be great. Well, here's the other issue. It, could he be seen as a stealth candidate against Roe versus Wade? He has written mm -hmm. that the government has a permissible interest in favoring fetal life and refraining from facilitating abortion. He dissented from a ruling that let an undocumented teenager in custody get an abortion, mm -hmm. but he has told senators in the little meet and greet recently that he thinks Roe versus Wade is settled law. law. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, sorry to, yeah, and yeah. Susan Collins among them. And, yeah. uh, and she's uh, critical. And, uh, and some people said, well, if you got Susan Collins, hey, slam dunk, that's it. Uh, what, are we, what are we talking about here? I mean, Susan, yeah, Susan Collins has, a lot of people have, have said that Susan Collins basically has pre-approved Kavanaugh, that she's not going to oppose him, that she's not going to fight it, and we, in reality, just have to sort of put up with the fact that the Republicans are not going to break on Kavanaugh. You can't look to the Republicans to kill the Republican uh, appointee at this point. Right. Let's shift gears, guys, and go to uh, Florida, because Florida was ground zero, really, for, for politics this week, yeah. a bunch of primary elections. And it's an interesting controversy. I'm wondering if Ron DeSantis should take a lie detector test. Ron <laughs> DeSantis is the Republican nominee for uh, governor, and he uh, is going to be opposing a, a man who is the Democratic nominee, Andrew Gillum, who is black, uh, was pretty progressive. And so uh, the white Republican said, the last thing we need to do is monkey this up by trying to embrace a socialist agenda oh with my. huge tax increases and bankruptcy. Oh, so some people suggested there's kind of a racist dog whistle oh, yeah, thing going just on a, here. Maybe an, an indication. Yeah. And of yeah. course, yeah. DeSantis yeah. said, no, it's just an expression. Now, I was thinking about it. I've heard the expression... Um, Monkey business? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I've ever heard the expression monkey this up. Yeah, no if, one's ever said it. Is anyone in the room? Outside of a Clan no, rally? I, well, you know what? And then Howard Cosell got in trouble for using the word monkey on the air years You're ago. You're absolutely uh, right. Howard did no, get uh, into oh, trouble. Are you going to start out really? Howard? Okay. Really good <laughs> on deal. Monday Night Football, he said... Regarding with the wide wins. receiver Kansas Washington, better. Uh, with the Washington Redskins, probably now named <laughs> yes, the Skins, right. apparently with the Redskins, uh, he said, "Look at that monkey go!" And oh of course, he got God. pilloried and probably almost fired. I don't oh yeah, he got into a lot but of he, trouble. He didn't get but fired. again, monkey around is an expression. Mike Gary, you were about to say something. Well, have you he, ever he, heard the expression "monkey this up"? I have not, not in that context. But what he also did is he prefaced that statement by calling Gilliam very articulate. So there's oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. There's one dog whistle, and then he actually let the dog out of the kennel. Yeah, exactly. And I believe Joseph Biden got into trouble when he was running against Barack Obama for saying he's very articulate, he's very clean. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, Remember that's great. that? Yeah, clean absolutely. and articulate. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this isn't really, this isn't a racist, people have said this isn't a racist dog whistle. As, as Mike Gary just said, it's a, it's a racist dog bullhorn. This is insane. This is ridiculous <laughs> and over the top. And in this, in addition, this guy was a member, and I believe a moderator of an online group that was additionally explicitly racist in let's, other ways. Let's get to back to my suggestion. Why not hook him up to a lie detector machine? Yeah. This would be a way to prove Ron DeSantis's innocence. He could say absolutely no racist intent when I said monkey this up. Yeah. <laughs> I meant something else. Okay. So, All right. So not no, sure what. You're right. Nobody's going to hook him up to uh, no. to the lie detector no. machine.
So let's go back to home, guys. Uh, let's talk capital punishment here in California. Our good pal John Phillips, KBC uh, talk show host, uh, writes a, uh, an opinion page uh, piece, an op-ed piece for the Daily News a couple of times a week. And he's noting that Governor Brown just may commute every single death sentence in California. Uh, he points out that um, this month alone, Brown has given 67 pardons and commutations, including commutations for 18 people who were serving a life sentences without the possibility of parole. He gave an outright pardon to a 40-year-old Fresno man from Cambodia who was convicted of murder in 94 for shooting a gang rival and was facing deportation by the Trump administration. And now, former Brown appointees are calling on the governor to commute the sentences of all 748 death row inmates in the state. And apparently, there was an impediment to that. Uh, if somebody was convicted of another felony in addition to the capital crime, in order for the governor to commute the sentence, he would have to get the concurrence of a majority of the California Supreme Court. Who knew? But that was the rule. Well, California Supreme Court has just said, nope, never nope, mind. Don't need it. That's not necessary. Paving the way. And so people are speculating, and John Phillips is saying this is a distinct possibility. This will be Jerry Brown's goodbye gift. <laughs> After 16 years <laughs> yeah, and four well. terms, record-setting right. as governor of California, he's going to essentially shut down capital punishment and commute every death sentence. This is his revenge for Rose Bird's treatment. Oh, exactly right. Rose Bird, yeah, that's yeah. right. Rose Bird, who got dumped out of office after 55 straight anti-capital punishment votes. Do you think, you know, some politicians, uh, they don't like to grant clemency or, or, or let the Manson girls out and so on because it'll be, you know, political uh, hemlock. But Brown's kind of done in terms of political offices. I would don't think. Don't think he's, well, don't although think people he's older than Brown are running for president. That's true. But don't you think he's going to feel free at this point in his life and his career to do what he wants? And if, in fact, he's got kind of a secret or not so secret, uh, so secret. animus toward capital punishment, this might hi be his way of saying goodbye, I'm going to do what's right? I think so. I think you're right. I, I think you don't you don't you don't put somebody on the California Supreme Court like Rose Byrd unless you're anti-capital punishment, and he is. And uh, his pattern of behavior is indicating this is the way he's going. And a lot of people would say this is sort of subverting the intent of the law and of, of the, the, can the he, people. Can he, in exchange, though, lock up everyone responsible for the bullet train? <laughs> <laughs> lock he'd, himself he'd be locking up, himself up. himself. Plank, yeah. Plank, yeah, exactly right. Let's. Uh, I, that's an interesting question as to whether Gavin Newsom is going to be as enthusiastic for the bullet train. Mm -hmm. Has anybody heard anything about whether Newsom is, is maybe going to turn the spigot off? I mean, it would be sort of hard to reverse things because that's a, a very progressive deal in terms yeah. of uh, the public uh, progress uh, and activity and jobs and so on. And you haven't said much about it. I yeah, so we, we don't really you know. You might have to replace it with something else. If he comes up with a newer, sexier, even more progressive policy, yeah, people might jump on but board. Faster, cheaper Southwest uh, flight, flight uh, yeah, exactly. between San Francisco and Medicare Los Angeles. All, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So, uh, women on corporate boards, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, interesting case, uh, interesting issue uh, has arisen here. Apparently, the California State Senate has said yes to this, mm -hmm. and the California Assembly is mulling it over. And the idea is that the legislature, the, the state of California, would say to private companies that, that sell their, their stock, they're, they're public in the sense that uh, they, uh, they sell stock, but they're private companies. They're not governmental entities here. The legislature is going to say to every corporation domiciled in California, you know what? There aren't enough women on your boards of directors. You're going to have to have a certain number. If you've got uh, five board of director members, you've got to have at least one woman within a few years, and then you have to have at least two women down the road. Um, if this passes, and as I understand it, France did this several years ago, but I don't know that it's in, in place any place else in America. Uh, do you think it's going to survive a court challenge? I'm trying no. to think what provision in the law, the Constitution, a statute or whatever, would let the government tell Connor Inc., you've got a private company, mm. you've sold stocks, so you're public in that sense. Wouldn't you have a right to say, hey, Jerry Brown, uh, thanks for the input. You know, I'll, I'll seriously consider putting more gals on my board, but screw you. You know, you, you can't tell me how to run my business. Uh, do you think it's going to survive a court challenge? Yeah, I can't really see that it would. I mean, regardless of whether it's a good idea to have women on your board, gender balance in some form, it, hint, it is a good idea. But it, it, the idea of it surviving a court challenge as in the form of a quota, a demand, a requirement, because a lot of other cases that are about discrimination uh, and quotas and affirmative action and the rest, 
they are about allowing, for example, universities to take into account voluntarily by themselves to, to, to make that choice on their own. But forcing someone to do that, that's a whole different, no. a whole different issue. No, that's a whole different can of worms. I can't even and say I, how and it it's probably un, not that I know. You guys know. You're the lawyers. I just, so I we know everything, yes? I, yes, you do. Yeah. <laughs> but I, w I would imagine that some, some judge will strike it down as being unconstitutional. And, yeah. Plus, yeah. where are they, they going to draw the line? Would they not then say, well, we have to have people of color of X percent uh, of board members. We have to have people with different sexual orientation. I mean... Yeah, where does it stop? Yeah, I, I don't know how you could really... Uh, draw the line. Well, the, uh, I'd say the, 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 the most common ethnicity on the planet is, I believe, Han Chinese. So there has to be one Han Chinese board member on every single corporate board. Well, speaking of the, the Asian issue... Uh, the Asian issue? Well, is there, there an Asian issue? There's a big Asian issue. Oh, yeah, Crazy issue. Rich Asians is making a lot of money. That right. is an issue. Apparently, right. it's, really apparently it's a great movie. Wait, what, would you go to Segway's R Us to get that line? <laughs> <laughs> the poker scene was very bad, but the rest of the movie's good. So there's a lawsuit pending against Harvard saying, you know what, uh, it is just like impossible for Asians to get into your fine university. Mm. And that's just not right. And apparently this week, the Trump administration weighed in. Jeffrey Sessions, he's got time on his hands. He's not uh, doing anything else Trump well, wants him to do. He's recused himself from <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> he's recused himself from everything except the Harvard Asian lawsuit. And the coffee machine. Yeah. So uh, the, 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 uh, the suit says it, it, this is super unfair to Asians. Now, I don't know if other uh, ethnic groups are going to join in with, you know, friend of the court briefs or whatever, uh, but you know, it seems like that would be the end of affirmative action if you're going to say to Harvard or other schools, mm. you can't allow race or economic privation to, to come into play here if the result is, as a matter of fact, it's virtually impossible for Asians to get in. I mean, the statistics are crazy. Like they, you know, they have to have 200 more SAT points to get into Harvard if you're Asian as opposed to other ethnic groups. You think that's, uh, that's going to make its way through the courts and be successful? I mean, the question is really, in our mind, do we want individuals, normal human beings who make up things like the Harvard Selection, Student Selection Committee, do we want, do we trust them to be making decisions about who is the best candidate to join their campus and join their academic community and be a part of the academic elite and, you know, form that part of the fabric of our society, or do we think that they are flawed and biased? Because I think what this this argument boils down to is basically these folks saying look we score really well on these exams and you use those exams as a metric to judge other people and the harvard selection committee whether they're admitting it or not they're probably saying things like white people asian people they come from privileged advantage positions in our society where they have the access to education to allow them to crush the SAT and then we look at another candidate who likely statistically likely not necessarily into on an individual basis but statistically likely doesn't have that privilege and background and expertise to allow them to get access to the education that allows them to crush the SAT so a lower SAT score from them might be more impressive and that is a, is a heuristic it's a shortcut that the selection committee might be saying and uh, discounting SAT scores do we trust that, or is it biased? Yeah. And that's 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 a really hard question uh, to ask. Who should be hole. making these decisions? Going yep. right down a rabbit hole. Yeah. So uh, these are such heavy-duty stories. Let's have fun with the story of the town of <laughs> okay. Mayo, Florida, guys. Have you heard of Mayo, Florida? We should ask our Mayo. friend uh, Rob Marinko if he lives near Mayo. Mayo, Florida. Yeah, Mayo, Florida. That's the real name, M-A-Y-O. You know what their name is now? They've rebranded themselves for a week. No, I got nothing. Miracle Whip. Oh, my God. Oh. The Miracle Whip people... <laughs> <laughs> have paid them $25,000 to beautify the city of Mayo to officially rename themselves for a week Miracle Whip instead of how Mayo. Much, how much money? Twenty five grand. Uh, Mayo, or Miracle Whip, if you, if you need a California contingent to this ad campaign, <laughs> yeah. I will change my name Absolutely. to Miracle Whip. That's right. I will do it. Mer M dot W dot hip. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, I will miraculously whip somebody. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you guys huh? know what happened with uh, Truth or Consequences in New Mexico? Yeah, uh, part of it I do, yeah. So the background is there was a town in New Mexico called Hot Springs. It was about half the way from uh, El Paso on the road down, um, well, El Paso is south, but up toward Albuquerque. Okay. And so in 1950, a very popular radio show called Truth or Consequences approach, uh, announced to the world uh, we will broadcast our show from your town if you will rename your town Truth or Consequences. And Hot Springs said, you betcha, come on down. So Ralph Edwards, Ralph Edwards and the gang the came down. And huh. forever since, this has been Truth or Consequences, New Mexico. 
the most interesting uh, <laughs> town name in the world. I think you they didn't even get a dollar for that. We are going to offer the Royal Oak Show. Mm -hmm. If you will rename your town the Royal, Royal Oak, Oak show, show, we will come and do the show from your town. One and time. I'm not kidding. One time. We'll do come it. I'm back for Hot Tub Time Machine. We'll be back on CRN with the Royal Oak Show. When you really want Italian food, you have got to get to Columbo's. Columbo's Italian Steakhouse and Jazz Club, Colorado Boulevard, Eagle Rock. It's that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. What happened to summer? You turn around and it's gone. So what do you do? Solution. Either stop turning around or head on over to Columbo's and enjoy the most delicious steaks imaginable. Seafood that brings awe and wonderment to your happy little taste buds. Columbo family Italian recipes so special they're kept under lock and key at an undisclosed and secure location. Jazz every night and the world's greatest meatballs. Need I say more? Oh, but I will. Enjoy the summer and head on over to Columbo's Italian Steakhouse. Good time central. Columbo's, because it really is that little neighborhood place you wish was down the street from you. Columbo's Manja. Hi, everyone. This is Fred Dreyer. You listen to me every week on the Sports Lounge. Well, I'm here to tell you my good friend and co-host, Michael Horn, is making his wine knowledge and his incredible industry contacts available to you. Mike will educate you in the world of wines. He will stock your wine cellar, wine refrigerator, or wine rack with one-of-a-kind wines. Also, as a lover of a great glass of port, I will share with you my experiences in finding the cigars that fit your palate. I will help you stock your humidor with great cigars that reflect your growing taste and the very best smokes for your budget. Mike and I can set up a once-in-a-lifetime wine dinner, and I can host a sports cigar party. Call us today at 818-818-6400. That's 818-818-6400. Let us find the dream wines and cigars of your lifetime. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Welcome back to the Royal Oak Show with our co-host, Ken Jeffries, and our millennial correspondent, Connor Oaks. So our second candidate for moron of the week, guys, the first candidate you will recall was the idiot who uh, mm -hmm. he wanted to go to the hospital cafeteria for a nice uh, lunch, and so he just faked a heart attack at the supermarket yeah. to get an ambulance ride over there. Mm -hmm. So here's what the other guy? candidate. It, it's sort of generic. Um, so there's something called cowboy boot sandals, and I couldn't believe it when I heard it, and I really couldn't believe it when I saw it. Mike, Gary, if you could uh, put up on the screen an example of cowboy boot sandals. Now, uh, I think if I were king, this would be banned. Uh, this would be totally illegal. Oh, my God. Uh, would you guys agree with me so that anybody who wears cowboy boot sandals is a strong candidate for more for, on not only of the week, but of the quarter? So for our audio-only listeners, you've got flip-flops, and then at the ankle and upwards, there begins a leather sheath <laughs> that you could describe <laughs> as... Vaguely Cowboy gladiatorial, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but embroidered in a sort of a Western theme. Oh my gosh! Yeah, thank you for explaining that for the folks who are listening as opposed to watching. Connor, would you guys agree with me though? This, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. Mean, you know, I got a libertarian Whoa. streak, but I just you know get rid of that for this one. Yes, yeah, some this should things, be illegal. Yeah, the government should intervene to protect all of us as a society. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So, sure. um, In and Out Burgers. Uh, you guys like In and Out Burgers, probably. Love it. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, it's like my least favorite. 
favorite fast what? food burger. Everything I, I like a regular old McDonald's cheeseburger uh-huh. better. I don't know why that is. Tommy's is the best. Oh, that's great. Yes, if you want absolutely. Chili, Mike Gary's chili, with me there. So there's a boycott uh, by folks against In-N-Out uh, Burger. And as I understand it, uh, they didn't donate to the KKK. No. They didn't uh, donate uh, against gay marriage. They gave some money to the Republicans. They gave like 30 grand. And now they've pointed out, you know, we, we actually donate equally to Democrats and Republicans. But for some Democrats in California, that doesn't matter. You gave 30 grand to the Republicans, the boycott, we're boycotting. Boycott, yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, is that mature? I mean, is the idea that it poses such a, a risk to society to give a little money to Republicans that even though the GOP is, let's face it, on life support in California, that they they don't deserve to live, they don't deserve to make burgers? Yeah, Yeah, if you're looking for uh, a gigantic... Uh, inter, uh, you know, multi-state, multi-billion-dollar corporation to be liberal on your behalf, you're going to be sorely disappointed. If you want a chicken sandwich from Chick Fil A, you got to put up with the, with the fact that the millionaires and billionaires. Yeah, and what happens own, if you have two of them together, a Chick Fil A next to an In and Out? Uh, there's <laughs> like a, a, a sort of a black hole yeah, of black hole, yeah, 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 forms from which no liberal can escape. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're just torn between the two uh, and ripped apart. It, 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 it's not going to happen. Torn you're between not, two liver sandwiches. <laughs> you're not going to find. A song coming on. You're mm-hmm. not going to find corporations that line up with all of your interests all the time. And when somebody donates 30k, it runs. It takes like you have to have like I don't know four million dollars to open a, a franchise for any of these fast food restaurants. 30k is nothing. If you if you donate that much to any major political candidate, it's a blip yeah, on the radar. Yeah. You can't well, base your life on Because the irony is uh, in and out is booming and thriving because all the Republicans are scooping up these burgers. And it's kind of like Fox News. There are all these liberal media outlets, and so Fox thrives because, you know, a third to a half of the electorate loves them. If in and out becomes known as somebody that, you know, is somewhat sympathetic to Republicans, mm-hmm. apparently their sales have, have gone way So yeah. Chick-fil-A sell right-wing chicken? Is that <laughs> that's pretty only, good. Only the right way. You know, I mean, obviously, obviously, I, as a liberal, am obligated to go to Shake Shack, and I do because they taste better than that. Anyway. <laughs> okay. So uh, it has come time for our um, our hot tub time machine feature, and uh, I think we had, uh, gosh, we've had Joe McCarthy recently. Um, we've we've had some some folks from political history. This uh, guy you're about to hear from is a uh, one of the stars of American political history. Mike Gary, would you please uh, play the tape? But this reflects, just so the committee knows, the views of some of the most experienced prosecutors in the country. I stand behind it because it is mine. I stand behind each word of it. It is my ultimate judgment. But this is a professional product. It's okay, not so the product of one single person. Guesses as to who person. might be speaking here? Huh. Uh, no. He's a star. He's a star might in be, American political might history. Be Ken Starr. Ken might be Starr John, John. announcing oh. the Clinton Star, investigation. Yeah, and so everybody thought he was just super unfair. I just hope that anybody prosecuting the president is fair. Bye, folks. CRN Digital Talk Radio prides itself on being the station of every situation. And you can listen to us on nearly any platform and device. Download to your iPhone, Android, and BlackBerry episodes of What's Cooking, And take Master Sommelier Michael Jordan with you 